What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time! djlittlerock.com check availability and get a free price quote and maybe you can have me at your next event you know i like to party with the people the people need to be entertained are you not entertained let me entertain you hey if you don't want me to sing at your party just let me know i won't sing (laughs) because it's all about you speaking of entertainment today on the program i have chesney claire chesney claire yeah you've heard of her you know Oh, you know a little bit about Chesney Claire. Well, stick around. You're going to get to know a whole lot more about Chesney Claire in the next few minutes. I'm so excited. This week's shows, I have my one public show every Friday night. Well, pretty much at least 50 Friday nights out of the year. I'm over at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Our video dance party, karaoke jam. Yeah, I said karaoke. You're the stars of the show. All I'm doing is pressing buttons. Sometimes I play rock. Sometimes I play country. Sometimes I play pop. Sometimes it's hip hop. Sometimes it's 80s, 90s, 70s, 60s. I think we did a, a New Year's party one time where it was all 50s. And I was I was doing a whole lot of yowza, yowza, yowza. <laughs> It was crazy. That was a good that was a good New Year's. That was fun over at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Hey, they got a full bar, kitchens open, pool tables, and uh, they got a pool tournament on Friday nights. So if you want to try your hand at playing pool, you can try and you can possibly make some money in the pool tournament on Friday nights at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Video dance party, karaoke jam. That's 8 p.m. until 1230 in the AM on Friday nights. Yeah, my one public show. And then, of course, you know, Saturdays and Sundays uh, are made for private parties. I get to do a lot of weddings and birthdays and uh, corporate events and all kinds of other things. So that's kind of fun. Uh, But uh, unless you're invited, you cannot come. Okay? I've had so many people come and say, hey, I'll be your roadie. (laughs) I'll be your roadie if, uh, if you let me go to that corporate event. That sounds like fun. I go, mm, that sounds a little sketchy. <laughs> I, ha- I have yet to, uh, well, I have yet to sneak somebody in as a roadie unless they're actually doing roadie work for me. I've been looking for a roadie since I started DJing way back when. All right, that's enough intro. Let's, uh, let's have a chit-chat with Chesney Claire. Yeah, I got her on the Skype. Uh, so if you're listening to the audio version, I encourage you to check out the video version on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash user, forward slash keys, Dan, and uh, you'll find it right there. That's where all my my podcasting and radio stuff is. All right, let's get into it with Chesney Claire. Skyping Chesney Claire now. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. You have a a fine background, and uh, (laughs) there's a face in front of me that I'm enjoying seeing. Chesney Claire, what is going on? I was going to say not much, but that would be a lie. A lot is going on. Sounds like a big lie because I wanted to see if I could do this a little bit earlier. And you said, I got stuff to do. And I'm very happy about that. Busy. Uh, was it idle hands? It's something to do with uh, uh, the devil's playground or something like that. Oh, not to... um, Idle time is the devil's playground. Thank you. Thank you for that. You know, I, I've read the Bible a few times, uh, but uh, I could not quite uh, get that uh, phrase correctly. Man, oh, yeah. Chesney my Claire. grandma put that one in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so you're always working. I mean, yeah, t- let the people know what a, a regular day or at least what today was like for Chesney Claire and then give people an idea of what a Chesney Claire is. Who are you? <laughs> Well, um, today was was pretty interesting. I um, I had a call from my manager, spent a long time on the phone with my manager. Um, I've also been looking all over Los Angeles, all over Vegas for somebody to shoot a music video for me for my upcoming single. Um, um, a little bit of songwriting, a lot of gym time today, and then... Came back and got ready. Yeah, I'm not good about uh, doing a lot of research, but for you, man, I, I you know, I, we've been planning this for about eh, maybe a month, maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, you've been on the books uh, since then, and I'm very excited that you're finally in front of me. But I've been me? listening to the songs on your, on your YouTube page. 
you're as as good a singer as anybody that is out there on the top 40 on the on the charts right now you have a melodic voice that could be turned into anything into any song i know that billy eilish has been uh the the song of choice for the covers but your originals are fantastic and from what i understand you've had you you're what 19 years old or so right now but you had I'm a song 20. 20 happy birthday <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> but you you had a song called uh, "I'm 15," so I'm guessing that was written somewhere around when you were 15. Have you been doing this for about five years? Um, I actually have been doing this for about five years. Um, the song that you're speaking about is called "15 Candles," and I actually wrote that one about um, about two years ago. As soon as I moved here to Vegas, um, it was it's the song itself is about. Um, it's about my dad being an absent father um, when I needed him at 15 years old. So, um, so that song really has has reached a lot of people, and I've gotten a lot of great feedback about it. Um, that was my very first original song, and uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, I apologize for dads everywhere for not uh, you know circumstances. Uh, get you out of the picture from time to time. I have one that I have one daughter that's far away from me. She's been far away from me since she was nine. But then I have one daughter that's with me, and she's sixteen, and I've been with her every step of the way since she was born. You know, so sometimes you know families uh, things go uh, awry, and 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 families go far away and they split up. I mean, I do, I do get to keep in touch with my uh, with my daughter who's far away, and, and I do get to keep in touch with the daughter that lives with me as well, and that's a good thing. But uh, you yeah. know, the, you got inspired uh, because you were missing a part of your life. Now, tell me about the move. You know, was that the reason that you moved to Vegas, and where are you from? Um, I am originally from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Shout out to my hometown. Um, I needed somewhere where I could have better opportunities, um, make better contacts. Um, so my mom and I picked up and we actually moved to Branson, Missouri. Okay. Um, stayed there for about six months. And that's when I started recording my covers. And um, fell in love with all that. Fell in love. That's when I really knew what I was going to be doing and really knew like what I was going to push myself like to do for the rest of my life. I'm like, okay, this is definitely it. And so, um, from there, you know, still not enough contact, still not enough opportunities. And so, uh, my mom and I just picked up, came to Vegas within like a week of deciding to come and, uh, yeah, better opportunities here for sure. Well, Chesney clear. I'm very, uh, uh, I'm very familiar with Louisiana. Uh, there once, I once knew a girl in Baton Rouge, but that uh -oh. was a long time ago. Uh oh. Mm. 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 <laughs> anyway, uh, no, she, uh -oh. you know, she. I knew her in Fort Lauderdale. She moved to Baton Rouge. Uh, she started working at LSU. Uh, and, uh, Go Tigers, I guess. And um, you know, she's still working there. And 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 I still keep kind of in touch with her and and uh, I see that she's doing well and I'm very happy about that but Louisiana the your Lake Charles is kind of a bayou type of town uh, were, were you born in it like a little log cabin or or like a lean-to and maybe one of those shotgun shacks <laughs> yeah right in the swamp and fighting no, alligators um, oh yeah actually yes um uh, yeah, there was alligators in our yard like every morning. Um, literally lived in the swamp. Every time I'd wake up, I'd have to trudge through the mud to get myself to the school bus. You know, it was just like, Louisiana, I love you, but I don't know. I feel like it's uh, it's just kind of melting off into the ocean. I don't want to say that, but like yeah, uh, because everybody knows New Orleans is underwater. Those dikes, those uh, levees are are the only thing that's keeping the river out. Uh, you know, the Gulf of Mexico out of Louisiana. My goodness, it, it, it just. They just need to move Louisiana just a few feet inland, you know. Uh, uh, darn you, global warming uh, and climate change. But, no, I think it's always been underwater. Uh, I, I don't think it's been um, – uh, it's, it's been um, a, a place that, that has been above uh, sea level uh, ever, really. But Lake Charles, um, that is 
country living po boys and and uh i mean because that's my favorite thing when i go to louisiana is go have myself a po boy a little shrimp po boy shrimp, mm -hmm. shrimp po boys oh, are shrimp. my favorite mm. don't get me started mm. on those mm. i wish i had mm. a nice big juicy louisiana shrimp po boy right now oh for I sure <laughs> but you're talking about uh you were um uh you're you're with alligators and i can relate because i'm born and raised in south florida real close to the everglades uh, fort lauderdale the, the unincorporated part of broward way out west we had everglades we had gators we had uh atvs and and uh you know three wheelers and four wheelers and dirt bikes was that something you did when you were a kid uh, i mean did you, did you play outside or were you one of those kids that played video games inside my mama wouldn't have let me play video games inside all day for anything. I lived my whole entire life in Louisiana outside, riding four-wheelers and eating shrimp po' boys. I know how to call an alligator up to me, like five feet from me. All you have to wait, do, wait. you ready? People, you're watching, the, you're looking all the fingers. You're looking at the video. <laughs> She's still got all her fingers. Okay, yeah. we can trust Chesney Claire. Go ahead. I can call him. I can call an alligator. You ready? I'm going to show you. <laughs> that's how you do it okay so whenever you do that it's a baby and baby alligator in distress and that's the mama all the all the the female alligators start coming to you and they do they just yeah. Ch chesney claire that's a, a talent yeah i think uh, on the david letterman show way back when he used to call that stupid human tricks you know oh, I love the, it. yeah it, it, this is these are the little things that that really have hardly any purpose for most people in the world, exactly. but for that niche amount of people, uh, yeah, the people in Louisiana, you might need a, a little alligator call from time to time to get them to come here. Come on over so I can cut you, and then we can have some alligator mm -hmm, alligator steaks and then make little alligator bags and, and little uh, alligator shoes. And, uh, yeah. and for those uh, people of PETA that are watching, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> alligator is delicious i tell you it's delicious oh my gosh i've never had alligator and no. i don't plan on it actually Hi. i can't picture that in my mouth <laughs> it, just like anything else if you fry it up right it tastes like chicken right uh, I, I think we're all living in the matrix uh you know er, everything tastes like chicken that was explained yeah. in, the, in the the matrix movies yeah, <laughs> that's why but I, I did grow up so far down south in the bayou that I actually started off doing country music. So like uh, I'd go to bars. I was about 15 years old and I would go in these little country bars and my mom would have to accompany me because I was too young. And uh, I remember my first time being on stage. I was I was little and I was nervous and I started singing Brenda um, Lambert's Mama's Broken Heart. And I got all the drunk girls in Louisiana that were in the bar on the floor and they were all dancing to it. And I was like, oh, that's such a cool feeling. Like, like, I just want to keep on doing this. Now, was it a karaoke show? Because I do a lot of karaoke shows, especially on Fridays over at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Represent, shout out. No, I, <laughs> I do a, a regular karaoke show on Friday nights. Uh, but was it karaoke or was it like an open mic for Chesney Claire? 15 it years was old. actually, um, there was the, the, the girl that was on American Idol. Her name is Danny LaCour, and she was performing that night, and she had another person performing, and I got invited to perform, so it was just us three. How'd that happen? Uh, How do you get invited to perform? Um, a good momager. <laughs> Yay, mom. Doing Yay, the job. Mom. Doing the work. So I'm guessing yeah. that mom single, single mom most of your life. Yep, uh, ten years now. That's an a, that's an important that's a very special thing. My mom, uh, for the most part, was a single mom to us two boys, and uh, yeah, us two boys used to get into it. And she would say, "Take it outside, and if you're gonna go, you get roughhousing and throwing yeah. shoes at us, keeping us in line." You have any brothers and sisters that you got into it with? Um, I have a brother. And he um, he passed away actually um, in 2016. He was 23. Um, he had, yeah. And so he 
I always got into it with him. I mean, he put me in chokeholds and had me on the ground with my hands behind me, you know, just just messing with me. But uh, I, I did lose my brother to an overdose in 2016. He had um, PTSD from the military. And um, so that's really been a huge drive in my life to keep going forward. He. He, he introduced me to all of his favorite genres, all of his favorite songs that I listen to today, but I didn't want to listen to back then. Like, like it just gives me inspiration and, um, and lots and lots and lots of drive to keep going. Well, I'm very sorry that you've lost your brother at such a young age. My goodness. Tell, I mean, tell me more, keep your brother alive. That, that, this is how we make him live forever is talking love, about him and getting inspired by him. I mean, did he specifically get, uh, you know, which genres and what kind of music did he get you into and what uh, did you take from that kind of music and what else did you learn from your brother? Um, that really means a lot that you want to keep talking about oh, it. Sure. Usually people are like, Oh no, but, um, he, Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, we, we, sh we, we were completely opposite whenever I was little. Whenever I was little, I was like, oh my gosh, don't play that. I want to listen to Miley Cyrus. Um, and when he would be playing stuff like um, Paralyzer and <laughs> like all kinds of crazy stuff. But now I, I go back and I listen to those things, like even the the soft, um, chill things like Coldplay or uh, he used to listen to all the time. Um, I'm trying to think. Just, just so many inspiring, like, like he, he had a beautiful voice too and he, he didn't want anybody to know it, but his voice was beautiful and, uh, nobody else in our family really had, uh, the, the music bug in them. So, uh, that was something that we always connected on. I mean, no matter if, I mean, he never really got to see me perform. So I'm guessing you, you never sung together for the family, at least a, a, anything, any duets. <laughs> Yeah, we actually did. So we had like this little karaoke machine and it had um, 90s best hits on it. And <laughs> that's what we would that's what we would do it on. I mean, like, a horse on a cherry tree, that song, <laughs> like all the all the 90s songs. That's well, these are good so memories to have, Chesney. These are good. I'm glad sure. that you had your brother, at least for those 23 years. You know that PTSD, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, especially science podcasts and neuroscience podcasts. There's, there's one, oh, um, uh, Mayim Bialik, uh, her, her breakdown. Uh, Mayim Bialik, who used to play Blossom when she was a little girl. Now she's grown up and she's on the Big Bang Theory, or at least she was. I think the Big Bang Theory is over. But uh, she's also a neuroscientist, and uh, she talks a lot about um, about different kinds of neuro things. But I remember she she was talking about PTSD, and uh, you know, not to make too light, uh, it is no joke. You know, if yeah. somebody says that they're feeling down, if they're feeling stressed, they're feeling sad, uh, they're feeling blue. A lot, some people uh, are. If you if you attempt suicide, if you actually go through and take some pills people are going to pay attention to you but if you just say hey i'm not feeling so good i'm feeling blue i'm kind of depressed people are going to go yeah get away from me yeah the, you know tell me you know, t just get a good swift kick in the pants and you know pick your bootstraps up and all that kind of thing all the cliches come out when that happens uh, did you do you have any signs that your brother was was going i mean down the tubes did you, were there any signs i mean um he 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 always told me. I remember one time he pulled me aside, like we were at a family function or something, and and he looked at me and he said, "You'll never know what I went through." And he started crying, and he goes, "I and and nobody will ever know what I went through." And um, I remember one time he even told my mom. He said, "I don't know how I'm going to get to heaven," and like. And, and, and like we wanted to be there for him and we, we were there for him as much as we could be. Um, um, but it was, it was really, really, really unexpected to say the least. I mean, he, something about um, happened is that he was, he was open about his feelings. And so he called the VA, he called the veteran, veteran and um, he said, my name is Matthew LeBlanc that's my brother's name. Matt LeBlanc? Said, mm -hmm. Yeah, like wow. the actor. Okay. How are <laughs> yeah. you doing? 
Yeah, he said, my name is Matthew LeBlanc and I need help. And they, we, he had him on speakerphone and they said, I'm sorry, but we don't have any room for you. We can't take you. We can't help you right now. And within two weeks, my brother was gone. I've heard mixed reviews about the VA and now you have, you know, you're, you have firsthand knowledge and you're giving it to us secondhand, but we're getting another experience, another, another statistic, right. uh, you know, and, 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 and it's sad. Yeah. yeah. And, and so lots of what I do in my music, um, is, su- is supporting veterans. Like I've done, um, I've done lives with wounded warrior project. Um, some of my first times on stage were actually in front of, 300 veterans, um, and and now I'm uh, working race to a race. I I just did a um, a live broadcast a couple months ago, um, and they're actually bringing brother's photo around the United States, spreading spreading the awareness of of what PTSD can do and what what drug addiction can do. Like um, they're just really going the extra mile. It's called race to erase 22. And 22 is the number of veterans who commit suicide every single day. And so I think I have heard that number. that number. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, it's, it's amazing. You know, the amount of times that I've talked to people right where you are in my little screen and I've talked to them and they've given me tragedy and they've turned it into inspiration and that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you can't help your brother. You know, he's gone. He, he, he took his, his, uh, his path, you know, the, the best he thought he, he, he could do. And now you're going to help other people not take that path, take a, a yeah. better path, you know, and, yeah. and okay. Uh, um, are you uh, doing like USO? Is that what that, that kind of thing is? Is it kind of like a, uh, you know, you, you go out and entertain the troops kind of thing or, or is there something else to it? Another basically, um, I actually, uh, yeah. So what I do is I do live streams, and they're 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 fundraisers for all of these companies. So like Wounded Warrior Project, and then I did one for race to race that was just to um, raise awareness about their business, um, especially um, since they bring them up my brother around. But you, yeah, you kids we, think I, outside I, the I, box. Let me tell you, <laughs> using the internet for good. You know, a lot of people use this social media just to, uh, uh, you know, to to say bad things about some people. But you you're using the internet for for good. That's a superpower. That's something you can do. So all right. So you got out of Louisiana somewhere around what 15, 16, and went to Branson. Um, I actually left Louisiana um, after I graduated. So I was seventeen when I graduated. I moved out of Louisiana at 17. Did you go by yourself to Branson, Missouri? I, I'm in Conway, Arkansas, uh, central Arkansas, and I've been oh. as, as close as Harrison. And I know the, uh, go ahead. I used to live in Harrison. Ah, <laughs> well played. I think I still have some shirt tailed relatives, some, some kin up there. Uh, my, oh, my brothers in laws and, and, and aunts and uncles and cousins <laughs> twice removed and all that. But uh, yeah, Harrison's, Harrison's kind of an interesting town. Um, yeah, uh, there's uh, the signs uh, that were up there and the, and the types of people that were allowed to be there after dark. Uh, people that are listening to me, uh, look up Harrison, uh, Arkansas, and, and, and look at the history of it. If it unless it's been uh, washed away. All of history is getting washed away. Have you noticed that as a young person? Yeah, um, hopefully, I hope that part of history is is out of Harrison, though. Oh, for sure, <laughs> just, for sure. I hope, hope they've uh, definitely moved from that. Correct. All right, but tell me about Branson, Missouri. I've heard rumors and stories that Branson, Missouri, is kind of like a like a like a Dollywood uh, versus Hollywood. Maybe oh, like yeah. an amusement park. Maybe like a strip full of uh, bars and and shows. What did you do in Branson? Okay, so Branson is very, very, very show. It's very, very, um, like, pat your hip, um, um, uh, yeehaw, we're, we're having a, um, let's go to the antique mall and hang out type thing. Uh, there's lots of antique malls everywhere. There's no bars at all in Branson, um, fun fact. Dry, dry County? Dry Town? 
Um, I, I, well, if there's I no bars. Like, yeah. I don't even know, but, um, yeah, to go to the bars, I was, I was 18 living in Branson. So I went to the bars, but I went to the bars in Springfield. Missouri. Okay. So Branson, Missouri, I've always been told, go there. They got the wax museum and maybe a Ripley's believe it or not. And, and all that kitschy stuff, you know, touristy things. You have oh, to yeah. go to Branson, Missouri one time in your life. It's part of original sin to go back to the biblical I, thing that we said in the beginning. I agree with that. You do have to go to Branson at least one time in your life, maybe at least twice. Okay. So Branson, you did some shows, you, you entertained the people, you, you met as many people as you could, you went as far as you can go in that town. Uh, you, were, you were too much of a big fish for this little town called Branson. So you went to one of my favorite places. I'm not a gambler. I, you know, when I was 16 years old, I did something bad. I was there with my family, and, and, uh, and I put a quarter in the slot machine, and I pulled the handle at 16 years old. Wasn't supposed to do that. That was many, many years ago, but that was the first time I went to Vegas and we went to Circus Circus and there was uh, uh, buffets and me being a big boy, I like a buffet. Me you know, too. All you I can love eat. a buffet. You're Terrible. in the right spot. Tell me about a young Chesney, Claire, a mere 18 or so, 19, going to Vegas. When did you, how many years did you spend in, in Branson? Um, I actually spent six months in Branson, um, so we we stayed enough for our lease, but we were like, let's get out of here. We got better, bigger and better things to do, um, but moving to Vegas was, like, surreal. Like, it, I mean, it was, I mean, it was, it wasn't surreal because it's, it's, it's something that we would have done. Like, it's something you would expect from me and my mom, <laughs> but, um. Coming here, it, it was crazy. We actually visited before we moved here. Um, I had met a producer online, and so we flew in and uh, recorded two songs, and I was like, let's move there. And she's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm the same kind of person. When I moved from, from Miami to Orlando, where, where Disney World is, it took me, you know, I, I go, you know what? I want to move to Orlando. The next weekend, I was there. So I understand, you know, taking a week and going, huh, I want to go to Vegas. Yeah. Move all your stuff, pick it up and go to Vegas. But, you know, Vegas is like this town, this mecca, this 24 hour place of, well, you know, there's good, there's bad, there's ill repute, there's uh, shows, there's always something to do all day, all night. They have their own power source right in the middle of the desert, you know, but and, and from what I all right, I've also heard stories that entertainers go to Vegas to die. That's, that's the end of your career, but you're starting your career in Vegas. If you could do go the way of, uh, what is it? Elvis and Wayne Newton and Britney Spears and Celine Dion and get one of those, uh, you know, places and just have a contract to where you perform for them, you know, five nights a week. Right. And it's the Chesney Claire show. Your name's right. up in lights. Is that something you're looking looking for? I would love to have a residency. You know, I um, I spend lots of my time trying to find gigs to do, trying to find um, things to take up more of my time. Um, <laughs> but having a residency, I think, would be so beneficial, especially just to to be able to do a show every night or every every five nights you know yeah. you think that I would think be the ultimate really plan the five-year plan for chesney claire uh no okay maybe 10-year no. plan that's that's maybe like a, a plan e okay all right well tell me <laughs> what's plan a what what's chesney claire doing in vegas well i have um i have lots of high hopes for 2022 i am Finally getting in contact with the right people. Um, it really took me a while because of COVID and all the stupid stuff that happened. Um, but I have huge plans for the next five years. Um, maybe a move to LA, maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know. I definitely, definitely, definitely want to have um, a lot more songs out because I just have an overabundance of songs in my song library um so there will definitely be more music 
first. Um, and hopefully in five years. Um, well, I see at least the videos. I'm a very visual person. When I do uh, my dance parties, they're video dance parties. I'll, I'll set up a screen, you know, or a couple of screens or several screens or a projector and make sure I have music videos. But this weekend, yeah, the Chesney Claire videos are going to be uh, on, the, on the screens and people are going to go, huh, who's that? What is that song? I go, oh, that's Chesney Clare. Now, I, that's the job of a DJ. I don't play music. I don't play instruments. And we'll get to if you play instruments. I don't, I don't play any songs. All I do is push buttons and, and get that new music into people's ears. You know, I have my, my online radio station, RadioWhat.com, and I've done terrestrial radio. And, I've, you know, my job is, is when people give me that, that record, give me that CD, or give me that digital media, you know, that thumb drive, uh, you know, and, and say, uh, hey, I got Chesney Claire's new song here. Take a listen to it and see if it's right uh, for your station. No problem. Sure. Bam. Plug it in. Take a listen. Oh, yeah, it's right. I'm going to put that everywhere. Everywhere that I play music, I'm going to play Chelsea, uh, Chesney Claire for sure, uh, you know, because what? I like it. No, but but that's my job. That's the job. That's the symbiosis between me and you. Not just talking here on the podcast. That's, this is a whole other avenue that re that's more recent uh, this is a, a way to get behind the music anybody can go to your youtube your soundcloud your apple itunes and find chesney claire but what made chesney claire want to do what you want to do you already said your brother you know i'm sorry he passed away your father maybe he wasn't there all the time have you have you reconnected with your dad at all oh my god oh, okay <laughs> that, that man might is a is, is crazy but um <laughs> that's your diagnosis uh she's a psychiatry major now i guess no no <laughs> yeah i can't that's me psychiatry major but um he so in 2012 my dad broke my mom's shoulder and he left us drained our bank accounts left us in the cold on christmas and um after that, I didn't want to speak to him. I didn't want to talk to him. And so I was like, that's, I mean, it's its not even worth trying for because if he loved me, he wouldn't have done that type of thing. And so a couple years passed, maybe like three years. So 2015, 20, actually 2016, because that's why I wrote 15 Candles. Mm -hmm. So the story behind 15 Candles and the story behind my dad is on my 15th birthday, I had a court ordered session um, with with the judge, the big judge. And I walked into this room and my dad was right there. And I haven't laid eyes on my dad since 2012 and it's 2016. And so I saw him and it was my birthday, 15th birthday. And I said, hey dad, it's my birthday. And he looked at me and he's back in his chair and he goes, hmm. And that was the f only thing that he said to me that day um, on my 15th birthday. And so after that, I, I'm always with me. She came with me and I fell apart, fell to pieces, whatever. Um, so skip a few years. I'm like, I'm going to reach back out to my dad. Um, I think I just like showed up somewhere one day where he was and like, and things were going, I was, I was having a relationship with him. Um, but it's like keeping in the back of my mind, that, you know, what he did was not nice. Anyway, um, met up with him one day for lunch and he told me that my mom broke her own shoulder and all of this crazy stuff and then slammed my door and left me. So yeah, it's kind of hard to come back from that. You know, that's a, uh, I'm sorry, that's a sad story. Um, okay, I, I don't know the man. You know him better than I do, but it, it sounds kind of selfish. But, hey, uh, you know, maybe he had his reasons. And, and you're a trooper for trying to reconnect. You, you know, they're, they're your forgiveness in your heart. Uh, it's the, uh, it, it, call it what you will, you know, karmic thing to do, the Christian thing to do, call it what you will. You were trying to reach out. And pretty much he cut your hand off. All oh. right. Uh, like I wanted to have my dad again. I wanted to be able to, to go see my dad whenever I needed help or just somebody to, to hug. That's a male figure. But um, he just 
He just didn't care for it. <laughs> hey, you got your mama. Hey, now do you do you look more like mom or dad? Mom, a hundred percent. Now, what does what, what does your mother do? And what did you learn? What did you learn from her growing up? Um, she was a state trooper, so um, she was a state trooper for most of her life, and then um, after she had me and my brother, she became um, the best housewife slash mama ever. And then um, now she, for the past five years, she's been um, helping me get my connections and uh, she's, she's got me this far. My mom has. Yeah. You got to a, you got to this level. You're at a, yeah. And, and I'm, you know, like I said, I'm very visual, but you know, I'm also audio. I've been listening to music. I've been, you know, music has been a part of my life, my whole life, uh, you know, playing it and, and listening to it and, and discerning it and talking about it. But, you all right you got to give the shout outs to people you already said that you're looking for somebody there in vegas to help you make a new music video but tell me about the people that, that made the wonderful videos that you already have out there the 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 15 one is great the come alive one is really great because you included so many different people it looks like a story you know stories within stories in a in a three minute thing you you've told like four stories in one song and that's what that's a good music video tell, tell me about the people that helped you to produce the songs first of all the audio and then who helped you produce the video portions um so the audio was produced by um jay sessions for come alive and 15 candles um and then the music video was directed by Josh Sakima. He came in from L.A. He's done uh, Noob Dogs videos. He's shot Billie Eilish before. And, like, he does all kinds of great names. But, um, yeah, he did. He actually did Pink Candles and Come Alive. Where, was, where, where were they shot? They were both shot here in Vegas. Um, actually, both. Uh, 15 Candles near the Strip, uh, kind of on the Strip, and then uh, Come Alive was on the Strip. It was in a, it was in a penthouse hotel thing. Fantastic. Well done. Good lighting, good coloring, nice to look at, and, you know, nice to listen to the audio uh, of it. Now, was the audio mixed as well in Vegas? Um. Yes. That's yes. where that's where that that uh, person is. Fantastic, uh, Mike. Uh, I, you know, I appreciate it so much that that uh, that there. You know, you know, there's a team. You have your mom. Uh, she completely quit her job. No more state trooping. You know, because being a state trooper, what an incredibly hard job. You are on your own. If you're a city cop, you have other city cops that'll help back you up. If you're a, a sheriff. Eh, you have a few less, but they'll back you up. When you're a state trooper, you are one person. I remember in the Florida Keys, it's 113 miles of islands. When I was living in Key Largo, Keys Dan, that's where Keys Dan comes from. Oh, uh, you know, uh, But uh, when I was living in Key Largo, and sometimes there will be one state trooper that would go up and down US-1 taking care of all accidents, anything that happened on that highway. And there was sometimes, I was a firefighter down in the Keys, uh, he would, uh, you know, there would be a, an accident at the 104 mile marker and he'd be at the three mile marker all the way in Key West and he'd have to drive whoop, all the way up and we'd have yeah. to sit there and wait. And that's what, man, a state trooper is like a lone ranger. Did you, does your mom ever bring that to you? She's like a lone ranger. Oh, look at that. Okay, if you're you're listening to the audio version, she just put up a a license plate of the Louisiana State Police. Uh, Represent, (laughs) represent. You know, you still hold that deer in your heart. Yeah, she, um, I know she definitely, um, she traveled, like you were saying, how he had to go all the way down to that marker. She's definitely told me stories like that. She's told me all kinds of crazy stories. Um, yeah, I'm guessing but, she was on I-10 or I-12, one of the one of the two, I-10, I-10 maybe I-10. back and forth. And, she, you know, they have this area sometimes, you know, when they're shorthanded, especially if they work at night, they have this big area, maybe 100 miles long, and she would have to take care. Your mom is taking care of all these people in that 100-mile stretch. That 
that's an incredible thing. And if you learned any anything about taking care of of people, and you did, you took care of your brother as best you could, and you take care of you know. I've been noticing even with the blurry background, you've got people in the background uh, living yeah. there with you. Um, do you have roommates, or do you have uh, people that stay with you, or is that your mom? You, who do you stay with uh, in Vegas? I actually live with my mom and with my best friend. Um, so my best friend moved from Lake Charles, Louisiana to live with me. And now we're just living our best life together. You got a team. You got a team. Ch Chesney Claire knows that you cannot do it all by yourself. You have to have a team. So when you record songs, I've seen some of the videos. It looks like you set up a mic maybe in your living room or is it a living room someplace else? And, and do you have equipment at your house that you can at least... Uh, do a demo yes so you are actually on my iMac right now um I have a whole studio set up behind me um but that's like a coffee area um this over here is my whole stage I like I have a, a, a stage curtains that are black for live videos I have professional lighting over there um and Here's my mic, and I just have a little um, little Isovox booth. Um, perfect for making demos. I spend a lot of my time making demos now because um, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time writing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you're, you're a TikToker, so I see the, the little one-minute you know snippets on TikTok uh, that you put out there. These are little samples. These are little tastes of what I'm working on. Uh, you know, right. people cannot live without social media these days. Right. There's there's no way you're going to make it far. It used to be, uh, you know, an actor or, or a musician would go and audition. Now it's how many followers do you have on Twitter? And how many followers are on your gram? And, and how many videos, how much content did you put out this week? Huh? Come on. I'm trying to write a song here to inspire people. Exactly. Let me be a musician. So I feel the exact same way, you know, but, but on the other hand, throwing myself into social media has paid off immensely, like immensely. I had 200 Instagram followers March 29, no, yeah, 2019, I had 200 Instagram followers. Now I have... 9,776 Instagram followers. I have 26,000 TikTok followers, 16,000 Facebook followers, um, 17, I'm, my bad. And and it's just, it's crazy. It just grows, okay? You, you, you hook them, you're a pretty girl, but you also have talents. You can also sing. Now, who taught you how to use the equipment that you have, and what kind of equipment is it? You know, people that, that are or wanted to make a demo in their in their house. I know myself for about a thousand bucks, you can get yourself a pretty decent mic, uh, get yourself a decent mixer, uh, you know, maybe an interface for your computer. You know, the computer itself might be a, a bit more than that. You know, maybe an iMac, but I use a gaming computer. That's what we're talking on now, my MSI, and then my uh, my Sure SMB. I just nice. got I just got this one because I'm like I want to spoil myself. I want to get a good <laughs> I want to get a really good mic. <laughs> I got a I got a headset mic for the gaming. You know when I'm doing my uh, video games, but uh, you know I notice you have a gaming chair. A studio a studio set. <laughs> right, but tell me about uh, you know what what kind of equipment and, and who taught you how to use that stuff, Chesney Claire? Well, let me tell you who taught me how to use it. Look at this. <laughs> These are blurry, yeah. but um, all of these are my notes on how to use Logic um, straight from YouTube. So I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos, uh, teaching myself how to make a, a decent sounding demo. And um, I've been working on it for a while now. So now they sound better than decent. Let me tell you, Chesney Claire, I've heard, once again, I listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm driving around uh, doing my stuff during the day, and another podcast kind of gave the argument, uh, do you need to go to college uh, with all the YouTube, with all the Google searching, with everything out there? You could learn pretty much how to be a neuroscientist, uh, a, a doctor, 
uh, you know, with with the YouTube, the only thing that's lacking is the practical. Uh, you know, if you have to, you you know, do something that intricate. But to to do a uh, to make a, a music video, uh, to write a book, to uh, you know, learn anything, how to crochet, uh, you could learn it on YouTube. Do you have you gone to college? Do you have any aspirations of of going to college and learning some things, uh, book smarts, or you want to be street smarts? Um, I actually got a full ride scholarship to LSU. Oh, okay. What did you What did you study? What do you want to be when you grow up? I turned down the scholarship to do music full time. As you would. I've been to college a bunch of times. You know, mostly it's like uh, I needed to learn electronics. I learned electronics. I needed radio and communications. I learned radio and communications. It's more. I used college more as a vocation. Well, you know, I needed firefighting. I learned how to fight fires. Uh, you know, I needed some EMT and paramedic. That was probably the most intricate one. You know, the EMT, the paramedic, because you had to, hey, I'm, I'm taking care of people. And then that was that was the one that was probably the most uh, uh, most uh, normal college, you know. Uh, but the other stuff is, is learning exactly what you're doing. A radio and TV, I went to Connecticut schools of broadcasting, spent way too much money, and I could have learned it all on YouTube <laughs> if I would have just waited another year. I definitely have put my thrust myself through a whole Berkeley class, <laughs> like for sure. I um, I I'm, I definitely I learn stuff every day. I watch YouTube. I literally use YouTube every single day for learning new things about the music business, about the music industry, about um, logic, about um, how to send. AIF files. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely a useful tool. Oh yeah, I, you know, I want to build a, a desk. This is what men men things do. You know, I, I bought some new tools, so oh, oh I want to build a desk. But first, I'm going to watch a YouTube video on how to build a desk. You know, because I I don't want it to be crooked. I want it to be to my specifications. I want to learn how to do it. Now, yeah, I've I built some stuff before in the past. I I had my grandfather with me, and my dad was missing as well. Uh, the last time I saw him, I don't know. I guess I was not even a teenager. You know, he, 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 you know, so yeah. And he left my mom either just when I was born or just before I was born. So I understand the absent father thing, but I also understand the strong mother thing as well. You know, she's, she's been married a few times. She's been on the podcast. So, so she's told all this on the, on the podcast. And let me tell you, if you're going to do a podcast with your mom, don't, because there's stuff that you don't need to know about what she did before you were born. No, oh, no, I didn't need to know stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I know a strong mom. She definitely taught me how to be independent. And it sounds like she taught you the same thing, how to be strong, you know, because you've gone through hardships and I feel it. But uh, the songs that you that you write, the songs that you sing and even the songs that you cover are songs that that have feeling. Billie Eilish. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, she she was a YouTube star, wasn't she? Wasn't uh, when she started? Um, no, she actually just blew up out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like uh, Bieber. You know, Bieber did the, the YouTube thing, and, and some other people have started on YouTube and were YouTube famous and TikTok famous and, uh, and maybe Instagram famous. But, uh, and then all of a sudden, huh, they caught fire. That's what I'm right. hoping for you, Chesney Claire, is that I, all, all this content that you're putting out there, your name is out there, your brand is out there, Chesney Claire music and i've said it a bunch of times so that my listener can have it drilled in his or her head and uh, chesney claire yeah i need to go to a chesney claire show find out how i can support how can people support and give people you know give people i, I got two tooth folds uh, two avenues to explore give people shout outs that have helped you along the way you've already said a few and then how can people get a hold of you and how can people uh, support you and maybe a third fold. How can people see a, a Chesney Claire show? Okay, let's get it. <laughs> um, first, I'd love to thank my mom, as if I haven't already. Um, she's the, the number one reason why I'm still doing what I'm doing. Um, pushes me every day. I until I'm like, stop, <laughs> but, but it's a good thing. I, I promise. But, um, wanted to thank my newfound, um, Nashville team 
um, Ryan Lau and Keegan Rust. Um, they helped me put together my last single, which has reached 50,000, 57,000 streams on Spotify um, in, in three months, and it's charting. Um, so that's a big thing. Uh, um, my team is very small. No, oh, that's fantastic. You know, it, 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 I've, I've been told my whole life, uh, don't trust anybody. But I trust everybody. I, I'm a sucker, I guess. I don't know. I trust everybody. Until they do me dirty, and then I go, hmm, you're out. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm finished with that guy. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah. no, I, I like that your team is small. And, you know, you, you have the ability to, to make those demos. You have songs that are written. I'm sure you have other papers uh, besides those papers that help you uh, to put the music out there. I'm sure you have... Uh, notebooks how do you write your songs do you write them on notebook or do you write them on uh, oh, on computer or what perfect. i gotta show you oh okay we're gonna see the magic book these are two notebooks out of about 20 that are completely filled every single page is completely filled not one blank space where i can jot down a note for a song nothing 20 and, notebooks are filled and these are our secrets and if anybody gets them then they'll make it as far as me in the music <laughs> that's fantastic but you've been doing this since you were since you were a kid uh, do you have an english teacher or a music teacher to thank and and do you play in, in instruments i'd love to thank my my english and my music teachers miss allison marino I love you, and I thank you for um, pushing me to join your show choir. Um, <laughs> I want to thank my English teacher. She, we have a thing where I call her my spirit animal, Miss um, Bayham. So thank you for teaching me how to write, <laughs> teaching me, teaching me how to word things properly, and yeah, those yeah. are my, those are those those they. They both definitely help me. Um, no, I always have to give it up to the teachers. We we don't come into this world lear knowing everything. We have to learn it yeah. from somewhere. First, it's your your parents and and your siblings. You know, they'll teach you some things. Um, yeah. Most people go to school. Some people are homeschooled. Uh, my yeah. sixteen year old has been homeschooled since uh, since she started since she started school, and she doesn't That's see any uh, reason to go to public school. Uh, and she's been a dancer. I mean, do, have you had any extracurricular activities? That uh, did, did you do any stage stuff while you were in school as we wind this thing down? Um, I, all I did in school, um, I tried to do sports. That obviously didn't work out. Um, What's your I shot sport? and scored for the other side in ah. basketball, um, which was the most embarrassing moment of my life. But um, I joined show choir whenever I was a sophomore, I believe, in high school, um, and there was only like six of us in there. So we had a drummer, um, a key player, bass, guitar, and um, four singers. So sounds like Glee. I mean, it's very, <laughs> very tight. Is it was it more like a Glee club? I guess. Kind of. We would we would go. We were like a cover band. So we, we we got all these covers and we would go perform. We performed at Golden Nugget Casino in Lake Charles. Um, we performed at the mall on Christmas. We had Christmas songs, and that really gave me um, the motivation and like the the comforting feeling. Like, okay, I can go on stage. This is no big deal because it was with my classmates, and they were all calm about it. So. <laughs> that is so. so cool. I mean, uh, you, you're 20 years old, and you just turned 20 as far as I uh, What is it? Uh, wait, did I see it? July? Is July your birthday? Yeah. Hey, happy birthday, July. Uh, and, I'm uh, an <laughs> Yeah, I, okay. I added you on, on Facebook, so hopefully uh, you'll uh, accept my request. I, I, I also subscribe to your YouTube, and I encourage the people listening uh, to also subscribe to your YouTube and your TikTok and your Instagram and your uh, Twitter, and make sure that uh, Ch uh, Chesney Claire is out there. Now, if, if people slide into your DMs, business only, you know, if people slide into your DMs, what, kind, what, what, are, you, uh, what are you up for uh, business-wise, uh, professionally? Uh, would you be up for collaborations? Do you, uh, do you want to be uh, sing the hook for the next famous rapper? Yeah. 
I'm, I'm open to any kind of collaborations. I would love to sing a uh, hook on a famous rapper's um, thing. Um, but I actually, <laughs> I actually um, am always open to collaborations, um, especially with other vocal artists. I think that's a great way to get my name to their side and their name to my side. Um, so yeah, if you want to get in touch, um, What's you the best way? Go through my management. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you have a website. Um, yeah. Uh, Ch Chelsea Claire. Chelsea Claire dot com. Chelsea Claire dot And I'll put yeah. that in the show notes for sure. So people know where to find you. I found your Facebook for some reason. It wasn't working for me right at that moment. But I found your Instagram, your Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, <laughs> Snapchat. Are you snapping every day, too? I am. I Snapchat every single day. Um, and if you have trouble spelling my name at all, I'm named after Kenny Chesney, um, to anybody listening. Um, so it's, it's Chesney Claire, um, under everything. My Instagram's at Chesney Claire, Facebook's at Chesney Claire Music, and anywhere you want to look me up for it to listen to me is Chesney Claire. Well, as much pop as you sing and as much, you know, I get, I get top 40. I don't know what, I, I don't like. I can't put it in a box. I don't want to put it in a box. But as much pop as you sing, I, I, you can't uh, you can't forget your country roots being named after Kenny Chesney <laughs> for no. sure. So <laughs> That's you, hard to forget. Yeah, I, I know that they they did it with the uh, management. It's kind of hard uh, if you get uh, signed with a big record label. They'll want to be all up in your business. Uh, I know they did it to. Uh, to Taylor Swift where, uh, oh, we need two country songs on the next album. Well, I'm not making a country album. I don't want to sing country song. Oh, you have to. I'm twisting your arm. I mean, are you up to, you're an, you're mostly an independent artist right now, but you said you have some people in Nashville that are helping you out. Are you signed with a, a record label? Mm -mm. Okay. I'm not signed with a record label. I'm completely in all aspects of my life independent. Okay. Um <laughs> So my team in Nashville, just just um, Keegan Boss, the one that I mentioned, he's a amazing songwriter. He does pop music, and so does Ryan. Um, so I'm just trying to stay in my pop R&B genre. Um, I don't really want to travel back into country because, honestly, that's not my favorite to even listen to. Um, so, so I don't think I would be happy like doing that. But. <laughs> But definitely um, open to anything and, and pop and R&B. I was working on a country station down in, in South Florida. And this was the, I guess this was probably in the early 2000s. And this was just about the time that uh, Vanilla Ice, he sang Ice Ice Baby in several different ways. And this was his country phase. So I was at a country station in South Florida and he was playing at a country uh, a, a, country, a country show and he sang the country version of ass ass baby so yeah I, that, That's funny. it might happen it might happen you you know down the line once you get established and and you know thousands and hundreds and millions of people are screaming your name and they'll say uh hey, try that a different way you know you'll do a live show and you'll you might come up uh, with a lounge singer type a version of your 15 candles song or your come alive song it's possible yeah. you know you you'll give something to those people at that show something a little bit different that they won't get on that album it's like this album. is just for us like, pretty yeah. cool <laughs> i agree with that that is cool and you're comfortable in front of uh, people and and are you doing shows now or or is it all studio you're doing studio and 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 online and creating content or are yeah. you open to shows or, or is there a show that people can go see you at publicly? Um, I'm definitely open to shows, but I have been staying behind the scenes mostly, um, working on my craft, like, um, trying to, trying to write more, more songs, create more content, create more videos. Um, just get my name out there before, you know, I'd love to sell out my concert first first concert i ever have you know <laughs> that would be a great thing to do Bam. um but i i'm actually um i went in october to um to reno nevada and i had a um i, I had a performance with howard hewitt 
and Danny Glover was there. And um, yeah, so that was pretty interesting. Um, that was my most recent, and I have been invited to um, perform with them again. And yeah. Wait, wait, you did say Danny Glover? Like, I'm Danny? getting too old for this? Not Donald Glover? Not. Uh, no. What? Danny Glover. Danny Glover was playing? He was. What was he doing? He was. Oh, he just came to. Um, it was. It was a fundraiser event for domestic abuse, and so he he showed up and he was there and he was a speaker. Well, Lethal Weapon's one of my favorite Christmas movies, so yeah, I I, <laughs> I, I enjoy a little Danny Glover and people that yeah. and people that are uh, yelling at their at their iPods or their or computers right now saying that Lethal Weapon is not a Christmas movie. Fight me, okay? <laughs> Lethal Weapon, Die Hard. They are the best Christmas movies. That's funny. Well, I actually, um, whenever I was going to sing in front of Danny Glover, I sang my song, and um, he was in the background. He was eating a Subway sandwich, and he was going. And so, and so he came around to see me after I was done, and he gave me the big old, biggest forehead kiss ever, and he said, "You're so sweet." And he was so he was he was very <clears throat> fragile. he was very he was very fragile but he's so 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 sweet and he like ended up sending his food over to me because it was too spicy or something and it was it was a very interesting time um look this is what you do as a musician as a singer as a songwriter you you make people feel a certain kind of way you can you can change bad moods into good moods people come out eventually they're going to come out to a chesney claire show and they're going to go you know i had to get a babysitter i had to uh you know put the i had to get off my couch you know in front of my netflix i was netflix and chilling but you know i got convinced to come out to a chesney claire show and then bam you did not disappoint that's what you, that's your job is to make sure that you do yeah. not disappoint. And that's what you're doing. You're 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 th- you're good already. You're as far as I can see, you're fantastic. I I'm a fan already. And you're oh, already, and you and you and you, <laughs> and, and you want to perfect what's already to some people, to many people I'm guessing, perfect. You want to get it even better. You're probably your own worst critic. Who are you who are you in competition with? Billy, <laughs> Billy, I'm definitely in competition with Billy. She's she's my one of my biggest music inspirations, um, but she's my biggest competition. <laughs> um, I I definitely do push my limits. Um, if something sounds perfect to me, I think it could be better. Like it could be better in some type of way. Something has to be better in some type of way. So I'm going to keep on doing that to myself and I'm going to keep on um, pushing my expectations and my limits and just see where, where I go. (laughs) The other thing that I've heard my whole life is uh, art is not finished. It's abandoned. It's like, yeah. Oh, uh, an an artist painting. Oh, look, if I add another, color here and it's it's oh it's just not finished it, it, it's not finished but if you think keep thinking that way it'll never be finished you know if a movie I, I keep editing i keep editing the song i keep editing i keep editing keep editing if i cut it this way it'll never be finished you, you just got to be happy with what it sounds like right now and then let it go and, you know right. he, george lucas 20 years after he made star wars recut re-edited and made a whole new star wars Hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, so maybe you can revisit it down the line. But yeah, I, I I don't envy you. You know, putting that art out there. You know, making stuff. It's it's a superpower. I've said it before on this podcast. But for you, it's a superpower that you have uh, that you can create something out of nothing. And I, I say nothing. You have an inspiration. You have tragedy and and happiness and and good times and bad times and things that happen oh that car went by i'm gonna sing, uh, sing a song about you got a fast car that's tracy chapman really yeah i you got know? tickets anywhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything can give you inspiration there's a microphone in front of you that's a great microphone uh, you know 
Yeah, anything. I, I definitely agree with that. I wrote a song um, with my songwriter friend in, in Nashville because it was finally raining in Vegas after not raining in like a year. And so we made a song called Rain in the Desert. Um, I mean, there's just there's just other things like if I'm feeling a type of way, if I if one word inspires me that day, I can make a whole song out of it <laughs> and it'll be like be like that's exactly what I wanted to write about today. That's exactly what I was feeling because those thoughts came straight from my head right onto this paper. And so that's like a, a it's like a diary entry. You know, it's like that's what I was feeling that day. Hundreds, millions, uh, hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people can have the same kind of feelings, but you have the the ability to go that one step further, put it on paper, put it on, uh, you know, into a, a microphone, mix it down, uh, you know, and, and have it mastered and make it into a song to inspire other people to know they're not alone. You're not alone in that feeling, that, that feeling that you, hey, it rained in the desert. Huh. I was just thinking about that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I remember when it rained in the desert a year ago. It's been a, you know, it's been a, a whole nother year, you know, and that Chesney, Chesney Claire sang a song about it and it makes <laughs> me think about it. And you give a, you give a good feeling. The people remember the smell and the, and what it looked like and what it felt like because you sang that song and triggered that memory. It's what you can do. I love doing that. And that's what I try to do in every one of my songs, because whenever I think about it, um, the songs that I've loved the most are the ones that apply to me. And I feel like I feel like everybody's that way. Um, so I try to make them very universal. So kind of vague where it can fit more people in the in the scenario. You know what I'm talking about? But if you hear that one line, that's like, um, I drove a car down a street um, and then I found some meat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that thing might have actually happened to you. And then there's like, there's so many people in the world that that thing could have happened to this person and this person is not this one, but maybe this one. Yeah. And they're like, I relate to that. Like, that, that's relatable. So I try to do that in every song. Well, you could be as specific or as widespread as, uh, you know, because, oh, uh, listening to music. Uh, if, if in the, the late 90s, the boy bands, if I heard heart and apart rhyme together one more time, uh, <laughs> I'm going to throw this radio uh, against the wall. You know, ah, oh, you're tearing up my heart because we're apart. How many songs? <laughs> oh, and all the country songs. I'm in my car with a beer and a girl and a truck. And a and a truck and, a, and we're going fishing <laughs> you know that's that record producer that's saying you know this formula worked for uh well it worked for that other guy hey let's let's do that same formula you got to mention that and even david david allen co made fun of it with you don't call me by my name hey it, did, it didn't mention trucks or prison or trains or drinking you know so at the end he he kind of made fun of it he he, mm -hmm. he, he became self-aware and uh that's very meta ah that's meta yeah. Uh, this is a new word that, I, that has been passed around now. People have to be aware of who they are. And it sounds like you're aware of who you are. And, that, uh, of where, uh, and, it's, and it sounds like you know where you want to go. And I'm mindful of your time. I don't want this to be the last time that we chat. As things progress, I, I want you to come back and we'll chit-chat about whatever new projects are coming on. I want, I, I want to know more about you, and I want to make sure that my listeners know about you. Uh, they definitely need to follow you on all your socials and find you on your uh, – are, are you in the, in the uh, air path? Are you, are you right next to the airport? No, it's you. Huh. Weird. Wait a minute. <laughs> it went away. Weird. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, somebody was in an airplane. I thought. Um, but for sure, I definitely want to come back. I definitely want to do this again. It was. Uh, it was a great. It was a great time, and I thank you so much for having me, having me on. Um, on. All right. Oh, and, and stay tuned because my next single it's called "Cruising." Uh, and uh, that's it, that. Only you know that. You're the only person that knows that. And anybody who's listening. Exclusive. So my next single is called "Cruising," and um, little, yeah, keep your eye taste. out for it because it'll be a little taste. Be, a little taste. A little, 
No. Ah, all you get's a name, pals, uh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, my loyal listeners. You get a name, and that's it. A name. So stay tuned. A name. No date, no nothing. You just gotta gotta think about cruising. All right. I usually finish these things off with last words for the people. Chesney Claire, Chesney Claire music. Uh, this could be words to live by, something you heard a long time ago, maybe something that you uh, that's a family member told you and or maybe a mantra that you wake up with every morning, look in the mirror and say, I'm Chesney Claire and I do this or whatever pops into your head at this moment in time. Chesney Claire, Chesney Claire music. Last words for the people. My last words are keep going forward never stop um use use whatever anger and whatever sadness and tragedy and trauma that you have in your life use that as drive to push yourself forward and if you feel like giving up just know that you could be like this close from actually getting to where you you're perfectly happy in your life so there's never any any reason to ever give up anyway um fake it so you make it that's another thing and um love you guys oh my goodness chesney claire what a fantastic young lady so nice to talk to and very talented i encourage you to go check out her soundcloud and her uh her, her YouTube page, check out the videos. My, my goodness, well produced. Even the stuff that she does in her room with her, uh, with her own equipment where she's doing covers. I think she did, she did a cover of the national anthem, uh, quite a few, uh, Billie Eilish songs. You could tell that Billie Eilish is, is a, a big inspiration, but, uh, she has her, 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 uh, her original songs are out there on the YouTube and uh, Apple and other, other places as well. Uh, and just look up, yeah, just look at the, the show links down below and you'll see all the different places that you could find uh, Ch Chesney Claire. And uh, yeah, she started in country and, and at the end she let us know, oh, named after Kenny Chesney. Oh, all right. I guess you, you're born in the bayou. Uh, you you got to sing at least a little bit of country. You got to have a, a little bit of country roots and that's a good place to start. But uh, you broke out from there, Chesney Claire, and she's, she's, on, she's, going places uh, you know she keeps going the the uh the way she's going she's gonna she's gonna end up with with everything she wants all her dreams will come true and and you were there you were there at this level she's already made it this far she's been doing this at least five years pro probably closer to 10 years closer to 10 and uh, she's moved all over the uh you know moved from different places in the in this country to make sure that she can further her career even more i mean you could you could make it in your own little small town and be a cover band and and probably work every weekend for you know this amount of money every weekend and maybe have a decent life but if you want to make it big you go to branson you go to vegas you go to la you go to nashville and uh if you're willing to make those moves and you're willing to uh, make those sacrifices because you know being a, a musician that has a a goal like Chesney Claire has, and you're going to give up relationships. You're going to, you're married to your music uh, for lack of a better statement. So um, it's something that she's, uh, she's, it looks like she's he straight, headstrong, ready to do. And her mom right by her side and best friend to boot. It came all the way from Louisiana just to have, have even more support, you know, and that's fantastic. It's good to have a, a team in your corner. You can't do it all by yourself. We need each other. You take care of yourself. You get yourself in order. And then you try to take care of somebody else. At least one other person. If you can, take care of some more people. If you have the means. Yeah. All right. And Chesney Claire, you're inspiring. You're being inspired. And you're inspiring others. That's fantastic. Ah, Thank you so much for being on the What Makes You Famous podcast, Chesney Claire. All right, now I got to turn my attention to you. If you, my loyal listener, would like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email keysdan at aol.com. That's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. It's keysdan, radiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. <laughs>